In this lesson, we'll take a look at some techniques for solving logarithmic equations. And we're asked in these examples to solve and identify any extraneous solutions. Now, I'll get into the extraneous solutions as we go along here. If you have, and as is in examples A and B, a single logarithm equals a constant, then you solve that by rewriting it in the equivalent exponential form. And the equivalent exponential form would be 3 squared equals the x plus 1, or x plus 1 equals 3 squared. And of course, 3 squared is 9, so x plus 1 equals 9. And so it's 8 that you add to 1 to get 9, so x would equal 8. Now we can check to make sure that that's a solution, and that's how you find extraneous solutions by taking that 8 and substituting it back into the equation to make sure it satisfies the equation. And so that would look like this. We would have on the left side, we would have the logarithm base 3, and we're putting 8 in here. So in the brackets, 8 plus 1 is 9. Now that does equal 2, this 2 right here, because 3 raised to the power of 2 is equal to 9. Okay, So it does check. Now, for b here, we would do the same thing. Rewrite in the ex equivalent exponential form. 5 squared equals the 3x minus 8, or 3x minus 8 equals 5 squared. And, of course, 5 squared is 25. I'm doing some rearranging here as well, so I'm adding 8 to both sides as well. So I have the plus 8 on the right instead of subtracting 8 on the left. 25 and 8 add to 33. And so dividing out the 3 here, we get x is 11. And so we'll check as well. We're going to put 11 in place of x here. So this is what the check would look like for b. The left side expression is this logarithm base 5. And so we're putting 11 in here for x. So this would be 3 times 11 minus the 8. And of course, we want to show that's equal to that 2 on the right side there. Now, this is 33 here. And so in the brackets, we have 33 take away 8. So that's the logarithm base 5 of 25. 33 minus 8 is 25. And that does equal that 2 because 5 raised to the power of 2 is what's equal to 25. So 11 is a solution. Now on to C here. No extraneous roots yet, but we'll get one in C here. If you have more than one logarithm, in this case they're added, in D they're subtracted, I want to rewrite that as a single logarithm by using the power or uh, sorry, product or quotient law. I'll use the uh, product one here because these are added together. So I write that as one single logarithm as the logarithm of the product of x plus 2 and x minus 1. And so we multiply the x plus 2 and x minus 1. x times x is x squared. This would be 2x and this product would be negative 1x. So 2x minus 1x is the x in the middle here. And 2 and negative 1 multiplied to negative 2. Now it's the same kind of equation as a or b. I have one single logarithm equals a constant. Remember, this is the common logarithm, so there's a base 10 here. So 10 raised to the power of 1 is equal to the x squared plus x minus 2, or x squared plus x minus 2 equals 10. Now that's a quadratic equation, and it uh, doesn't matter whether you're going to factor or use the quadratic formula. You need to rearrange and set it equal to 0. So I'll subtract 10 from both sides, so I have a 0 on the right side here. Negative 2 minus 10 would be negative 12 on the left. And so I wanna, I'm going to factor this. In order to factor, I'm looking for two constants that add to 1 and multiply negative 12. One's the coefficient of the x here. And so those numbers would be 4 and negative 3. They add to 1, multiply negative 12. So we set each of these factors to 0. So if I set x plus 4 to 0, I'll get negative 4. And 3 is what makes this factor 0. 3 minus 3 gives you 0. So 3 is a solution as well. Now, negative 4 is an extraneous root, and I'll explain why here. Go back to your equation like I checked in A and B here. If I put negative 4 in place of x, this is what it looks like if you try to evaluate that logarithm. And so I'm not going to do a whole check here. I would have, of course, the base is 10. Uh, negative 4, so I'm, I'm putting the negative 4 here, plus 2. And, of course, um, that's the logarithm of negative 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So let's say that equals some value x. If we were to rewrite this in the equivalent exponential form, it would mean 10 raised to the power of x is equal to that negative 2. And you see, the base here is positive. You cannot raise any base that's positive to any exponent and get a negative or 0 as well. Okay? So that's why this value has to be 
positive. You can't raise any positive number to any power and get a negative. So you can't take the logarithm of a negative, you can't take the logarithm of zero. Okay, so that's why negative four is an extraneous root because it doesn't satisfy the equation. It makes parts of the equations undefined. The three does work, and this is what the check would look like for three. We can do a full check for three. The left side would be the logarithm, and I'm putting three in here, and of course three in here. So this would be five plus the logarithm. Now if I put three in here, that's two. And of course I want to show that that's equal to one. I can use the product law and rewrite this one single logarithm by multiplying the five and two. So that's the logarithm of 10. Now remember the base is 10 here. So the reason that equals that one on the right side is because 10 raised to that one, power of one, is equal to that 10. And on to example D here. Now here I have a difference of two logarithms. And so I want to rewrite that as one single logarithm, so I'll use that quotient law. So it would be the logarithm of x to the fourth over 3 is equal to the logarithm of 3x squared. Now in order for these two logarithms to be equal, then what's in this set of brackets, the x to the fourth over 3, must equal the 3x squared. Now I, I'm only equating the x to the fourth over 3 and the 3x squared. I'm not dividing out the logarithms, so don't like put a cross through there, look, make it look like you're dividing the logarithms. You're not actually doing that because they're not multiplied by the log of 3. It's actually a logarithmic operation. These have to be equal because the x to the fourth over 3 equals the 3x squared. Now I have an equation without logarithms now, so uh, I want to think of that 3x squared as 3x squared over 1. And so the product of x to the fourth and 1 would equal the product of the 3 and the 3x squared. So x to the fourth equals 9x squared. The other way to do that is think of multiplying by 3 here, both sides. So those 3's divide out, and of course, that's, there's where the 9x squared comes from. Now, I'm going to subtract 9x squared from both sides and set it equal to 0 because I want to factor. And the common factor here is an x squared, so I can factor an x squared out. x squared out of x to the fourth is x squared, and x squared out of minus 9x squared is minus 9. That's not completely factored because x squared minus 9, that's a difference of two perfect squares. So that will factor into x plus 3 and x minus 3. Don't forget about the x squared factor on the left side. Now I have three different factors, so I have three different solutions. If I set x squared to 0, I get 0. If I set x plus 3 to 0, I get negative 3. Negative 3 is what makes that factor 0, and 3 is what makes this factor 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. Now, just like my little explanation down here about why you can't take the logarithm of a negative, remember you can't take the logarithm of zero either. Okay, if I put zero here, I have a log of zero, and there's no power you can raise ten to to give you zero. Okay, so we get rid of the zero. It's an extraneous root for this uh, last example here. Negative three and three are are uh, both okay solutions. Uh, negative three is actually a negative value, but it's an okay solution because if you plug negative three in there, negative three raised to the power of four is going to be a positive. And the same here, it's squared here, so it's still going to be positive. So you can take the logarithm of a positive. I'm going to show you the check for three, but the check for negative three would be very similar. So here's my left side expression. So I'm going to put three in place of x here. So I'm raising three to the power of four. And of course that's 81. Now, remember when you have the difference of two logarithms, you raise one logarithm by it's a logarithm of 81 divided by 3, and of course that's 27. So that simplifies the log of 27. So now I'm going to take my right side expression here, the log of 3x squared, and put 3 in place of x again. So I have 3 squared there. 3 squared is 9, times 3 is 27. So I still get the log of 27, and so the left and right sides are equal. If I use the negative 3 for my check, uh, to check that one, it'd be the same idea. Negative 3 will go here, raise the power of 4 is still positive 81, the rest would be the same. If I put negative 3 in here, negative 3 squared is 9, times 3 is 27, and the rest is the same. And that's the end of the lesson.